Hi guys, um, welcome to today's lesson where we are going to create our first um, glue crawler and populate the AWS data catalog using some CSV data um, that I'm going to provide via my GitHub. Um, and then we're going to create a glue job that changes that CSV data into Parquet. Um, and we're going to run that glue job. And then from there, we're um, going to use Athena then to query that data. So this really is an introduction to kind of data lake and big data architecture in AWS and Glue as well. So the first thing we're going to do is jump into the AWS console. I'm going to work under the Frankfurt region today because it's a region in this account I haven't used before. So I'll be setting up a lot of these services for the first time. So the first thing we're going to need when we look at the diagram is an S3 bucket to put our data, our input and output data, as I've labeled it here. So under the management console, S3, let's create a bucket. I'm going to prefix this with an A just so it comes up first in my list. Um, don't copy my bucket name, um, obviously, because they have to be globally unique within AWS. You call your bucket something that you're going to remember. Um, so I'm going to call this A forward slash glue forward slash johnny hyphen shivers hopefully nobody has used my name before um so it's unique um i'll take next um we'll just keep all the defaults for now there's there's um plenty of videos on this channel on s3 and permissions um so if you have questions i invite you to check it out so let's create that bucket okay that's that bucket created I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to create four separate folders. Um, we'll just do it through the console today for speed. Um, we need one that's called input, and that's obviously where we're going to put our input data. We'll just use the bucket settings. Uh, we're going to need one called output, which is where we're going to put the output of our glue job. So again, I'm calling this input output for clarity. You can actually call these um, whatever names you wish, but input output on my side for clarity. We're also going to create a third folder called Athena. Um, there is an Athena lesson on this channel already. Um, if you haven't watched it, I advise that you check it out. We go into a bit more depth on Athena, but we need a bucket or a, a place in a bucket, essentially, that we can store our queries down. So that's what this is for. And then the last thing I'm going to do is create a folder called temp, um, just in case Glue needs a place to put temp um, temp files that, that's created. So two more things we're going to do. Um, we're going to do this in reverse order, but we're going to do output first. Uh, we'll create a new folder. We're going to be using customer data, and that customer data is actually the Adventure Works data set provided by Microsoft um, for their SQL Server demos. I've downloaded it and put it up to my up to my GitHub a version of it. Um, it's it's a lighter data set, so we're just going to use one table from it and a short and um, limited rows. So what we'll do is we'll call this folder um, customer, um, and for clarity, what we'll do is we'll put hyphen. Parquet. So what we're going to do as part of this is change CSV data into Parquet format. The parquet format is great for working big data queries in Lake. So we're just going to put hyphen Parquet so we know what format this is going to be. If we just go back out to the highest level of the bucket, our input, so this is our input data, um, will be called um, customer again, except this time it will be CSV. So that's going to be my two, my two separations there, customer and CSV. I'm going to save that down. Okay, so we're in input and we have customer hyphen CSV. Let's click into that folder. Okay, so now we've created this uh, folder directory. The next thing we need to do is get the CSV data for it. So if you follow the link below uh, on YouTube, you can go over to the GitHub. Um, I've put in the customer CSV data already for us. Um, it is the AdventureWorks data set, a shortened down version of it. So um, feel free to have a browse through, but when ready, um, just download that uh, as a zip file and then extract the CSV as you need it. Okay, back on the console. Uh, once you've extracted that CSV, um, go up and go on ahead and actually upload that CSV. So all, all you want is that customer CSV as it sits. Um, we're happy enough with everything there. Um, yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Let's just keep everything as it is, standard tier. Uh, and we'll upload. It shouldn't take too long. It's a pretty small data set. Um, I think it's less than 800 rows. Yep. So that's the data set now up on AWS. So let's jump into the glue service. Uh, just go to the top, type in glue, and let's get on that console. Okay. As this is the first time we've ever been in the glue, we're faced with a screen. So essentially what we are going to do is we're going to use 
the glue crawlers, or just the data catalog crawlers, represented by this little spider down here, to crawl over our input data in AWS, and this will populate a schema and a hive meta store that we can then use for glue jobs. So this is automated by AWS. There's a bit of AI algorithms in behind it that do a best guess based on the format of your data. The file I've put up will be recognized okay. Um, in real life scenarios, uh, in my big data situations, there are times where the glue crawler will struggle to automatically recognize your data, but you can actually intervene at that stage. But for today's basics, we're just gonna keep it simple. So click add data using uh, using the crawler. Uh, you need to give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this customer hyphen CSV hyphen uh, crawler. And again, I'm gonna delete all this uh, once I'm done, but you can call yours whatever you want. Um, that'll do next. Crawler source, um, so it's a data store we're gonna use. We're gonna crawl it from S3, S3 in my account, perfect. It's in the first bucket that I put, it's in input. And we actually wanna to go to this higher level directory. So this is kind of like the table and this is the data that's in the table. So the CSV itself is not what we wanna crawl in this instance. We're gonna crawl the higher level directory. What that means in the future is that I put a second customer file in here, it'll actually combine the two files to form like one data set. And that's the way really in real life that you kind of use the partitions inside the S3 bucket. So we'll do a real life example. Perfect. We won't care, but I'm um, excluding any patterns for now. We'll just go next. Add another data store. The answer is nope. I am rule. Okay. What I am rule? You can create a I am rule update one or whatever, or um, choose an existing. I'm just gonna create a new one because it will give me all the correct permissions. Um, again, this has to be unique within your account. So let's just call this uh, AWS Glue Demo Customer. Oops, sorry, I spelled that completely wrong. Uh, customer, um, and that'll, that'll be unique. So I'll go next. Leave it as on demand. That means we can run that crawler as we want. You can set up schedules, which means if you have data sets that are constantly coming in, you can get these run automatically. But for now, let's just go on demand. Okay, output. So this is actually gonna be our Hive Meta Store. So um, we need to add a database and create a table. So I think the most appropriate name for this database is gonna be input, because it's coming from the input folder. Um, if this is your real data lake, you might have an ingestion area and you might call it ingest. You might have a landing area and call it landing, but I'm just gonna keep it one to one for the folder name so we can kind of cross back and correlate what's going on. So let's just call it input. And then we need to give the table name. So I'm just gonna call this table customer this time, okay? This is how you um, actually group your data and schemas and stuff. Again, this is a bit more uh, down the line and advanced stuff. So for now, let's just keep it all as default um, as this is just an introduction. Um, yep, so that's everything done. That's finished and that's your crawler ready to go. And then you'll see, do you want to run it now? And I'll say yes. This can take a couple of minutes, even though the data set's quite small because it needs to fire up. So what I'll do is pause the video here and then we'll pick it up when the crawler is done. Okay, that's the crawler finished. I just left it on that screen and it completed. So you can see that the crawler is ready to go, but more importantly at the top, you can see that it's made one new table and it's in the database input. Okay, so on the left hand side, Let's click databases. Let's go to input. Let's go to tables and input. And look, it's found that table. So, as you can see, it's actually recognized the entire schema for us automatically, if you compare it. Um, and that means we're ready to go. So what we're going to do, um, as I explained on the diagram, is we're going to create a glue job. And that glue job is going to take that CSV file that we've just crawled over and got the schema and produce a parquet output. Um, and that Parquet format's Apache based, and it's great for um, for big data, so and, and, and actually integrates very well with Athena. Okay, so let's get going. Let's click Jobs. Okay, so let's add a new job. Um, you have to give this job a name, so give it something that you're going to remember. So I'm going to call this Customer Glue hyphen Job hyphen CSV to Parquet. Um, you have to choose an IAM role. I've already created one. You um previously um you can you can um you can choose one um to your heart's content in fact i've got everything rule so i'm just going to give it um everything it needs we're running this on the the spark engine so that's a distributed big data computing engine um we're going to use python 3. we're going to use a proposed script gen um 
which is generated by glue itself. Um, this is quite handy for really quick transformations. In other lessons, we'll go into more of a deep dive about writing our own scripts using both the glue console and PySpark, which is kind of for a more enterprise setting. We'll just keep these as the defaults and we'll hit um, next. Our input is the CSV file that's sitting um, uh, on, on the S3 bucket. We're going to do a change schema. Um, we're going to create a table for our output. It's going to be an S3. We're going to output to Parquet. And then we need to go choose that um, folder that we set up earlier in output, um, which I call customer parquet. Great. So let's go next. Um, this is kind of our mapping. So we're just going to leave it as it is default. It's all one to one. Um, and we're going to generate the script. So the script's automatic create, automatically created for us, which is great and handy for these kind of quick lessons. And as I said, in future, um, in future content, we'll go into more deep dive and, and writing custom scripts. But there's kind of the high level. There's there's a couple of custom AWS libraries that do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So in this instance, it's creating a dynamic data frame based off the glue catalog. So it knows all the columns essentially that we're inserting. And then it basically does a write of that data frame out in Parquet format. So without further ado, let's just run the job. Um, Accept everything and run it. This can take kind of five to ten minutes, so I'm just going to pause the video here and then we can pick it up um, um, once it's complete. Okay, that took about 15 minutes in total. So glue um, actually runs from a cold start, and um, that means I have to kind of create your environment to run everything in the first time you run the job. Um, so that, that takes a bit of time. It kind of stays warm then for about 10 to 20 minutes. And then if you haven't run it in 10 to 20 minutes, it drops off. Um, so if we just quickly look at the S3 bucket, um, open it in a new tab. Um, we can see uh, in output in there, our parquet file has appeared. Excellent. Okay, so what we need to do next, uh, now we've got the glue job up and running and the parquet file, we need to add um add this to our data catalog so back into the console let's go um and create a new crawler let's add a crawler let's call it customer uh uh parquet um this time let's go next it's going to go over to data store um it's going to be one that's in our account uh because we've literally just created it or created the data for it uh, it's an output. Uh, we'll go over the customer part K. Excellent. Uh, we'll go next. Uh, we don't want to add another data store. Um, choose an existing one. I'm just going to give it the everything rule uh, this time. Create one as appropriate. Uh, we'll run it on demand. Output. We'll create a new database to keep things clear. And this time we'll call it output because we've input and output this way. And um, uh, we'll go next on that. Uh, yeah, so um, add database, prefix added to tables, optional. Uh, no, we're not going to do that either. Uh, configuration names, no. So we're going to add it to, to the new database. And we're going to say go grab that table name, which in this case for clarity is going to be that customer parquet name. And again, that's just for clarity. We could have called that customer or something else. But let's, let's keep it as it is. Um, let's accept everything. Let's go finish. Um, and let's run that crawler. So I'll pause the video here again. Um, this takes a couple of minutes to run because it's fired up from a cold start. And then we'll pick it back up once it has that parquet crawler ran. And we should, in theory, have a table called customer parquet um, because that's the folder, which is the table. Okay, that took about um, two minutes in total. Um, as you can see, one table has been added. So if I go into databases, you can see it's already there, but if it doesn't appear for you, just click the refresh um, and that should be you, provided it says obviously the table's been added. Um, if we go into output, tables and output, you can see the customer underscore parquet has been found and it's got all the same columns that we expected from our glue job. So that's great. One last thing to do, that's to actually query this data with Athena. So again, these are kind of fundamentals of how to run a data lake and big data processing. So let's go to Athena, it's good old Athena. So if we just jump back into the diagram quickly, um, we've got our glue catalog set up. It's got both the CSV and Parquet. Um, now it's Hive Metastore in here. We've used our glue job to do the transformation between the two different file types. And we're about to use Athena to read the Parquet format. So Athena, let's get started. 
first time I've used Athena in here, so the first thing you have to do is set up a query result location in S3. Fundamental you do this. Um, so what I am going to use is back here. Um, remember all that time ago we set up a bucket um, called Athena. So I'm just going to copy my bucket name. Oops, oops. I'm going to copy my bucket name. Um, and we're just going to specify that. So S3 hyphen forward forward. Uh, paste what I just copied forward slash Athena. So, yep, that's perfect. Let's save that. Oh, one more forward slash apologies. Let's save that. So now we have a location. So we're actually going to query the output. And we should have a table called Parquet. There's all our data. I'll make this query available on, on, on GitHub. But if you just type in, sorry, select. So it's declarative language, exactly like SQL. Select star from, and then you can put your table name in quotes um, to keep it to keep it all together. So customer underscore part K, okay. uh, and then once you're good, you can hit um, control and enter to run that query. Yep. So that took three point three seconds and bounced back. So that's using our glue catalog now to um to actually or our data catalog rather created by glue to actually produce a schema on read and then it uses that schema on read um to bring the data forward um so yeah that's a pretty pretty simple query um you can start doing more advanced things you know like selecting just the uh just the title um and then run the query it will bounce back and in theory it will then just tell us um, the titles yep and then something slightly more advanced again we here go count uh, title as title underscore count and we can group by group by title apologies group by title so just just follow along um, if, if you're coding with me Again, this is SQL Server language. I will do future videos on Athena and some basic SQL Server commands. Um, so look out for that on the channel. Um, if we run that query, we've just asked it to go and basically give us all the different titles that exist and give us the counts of them. And as you can see, Mr. and Mrs. are the biggest. Um, all the resources as usual available on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. And until next time, thank you very much for watching.